This video demonstrates the uh, final added mode on the blue box. And the reason I say final is I've used all 12 of the available mode keys, so unless I revamp it, I'm kind of stuck, and I think I'm about out of ideas on tone modes to add. <laughs> but uh, since I added the IMTS modes on uh, the ANI mode on star and the digital on pound, I figured I would go in and add one older mode, the MTS or mobile telephone service mode that actually preceded cellular of course and also preceded IMTS which is a relatively automatic system at least as it was intended to be uh, to be implemented in a dedicated uh, mobile telephone uh, had a lot of characteristics similar to the uh, current cellular system in terms of you know number identification and automatic call setup but the MTS system was quite a different animal that dates back to the late 30s actually and 40s Originally, it was a push-to-talk system, so um, it was not full duplex. So when you made a call, you had to push the um, button on the, on the handset to transmit and release it to listen to your called party. And it was strictly manual. You would press a series of buttons on your console to find an idle channel. You would key up the transmitter by pressing the button on the, on the uh, headset. And that would bring an operator on the line. You would give her your number and then the number you were calling. So very similar to manual telephone service um, for the home, except extended into the uh, mobile. Uh, a company called C-Code, in collaboration with General Electric, came out with a slightly improved method that allowed automatic or semi-automatic operation. And um, it was completely unauthenticated, so it required the use of flat rate service uh, in practice although an op arrangements could be made when the line was seized to have an operator come on the line and take the ticket for billing and then give you a dial tone and allow you to dial it. But if you did that, or if the operator did that, it sort of circumnavigated the advantages of the system. So in general, it was implemented with a flat rate service. So the way this worked, this is mode zero, so we'll press and hold uh, zero. All right, we're in mode zero now. Relatively simple in terms of control keys. You've got a, a D key to get a dial tone and connect to the system. So you would key up your transmitter and play this tone to uh, get a dial tone back. There was no authentication as, um, uh, as in the IMTS system that required a separate authentication sequence, uh, coded authentication, and then uh, the dial pulses. So you just press the connect key. There's a set of two tones. Uh, very similar to MF tones played for one second that would uh, get you a dial tone. Uh, to disconnect you would press uh, the C key while keying your transmitter that would send a different set of uh, one second burst of MF tones that would, uh, that would disconnect the call and release it. And that was it in terms of control. The dial pulses are a little bit different. They use an alternating series of um, two tones but the difference here is that when the operator um, originally took the, uh, the phone, in fact, I'll show this with a princess phone I have here, but imagine this is a control head. So if you took it off um, the hook, the uh, operator then would um, begin dialing after he pressed or initiated the connect sequence and got the dial tone. He would rotate the dial. As soon as that dial came off normal, it would send a connect tone, the same uh, used to get the dial tone, for as long as he held that against the stop or the dial moved off the off normal position. So as soon as I move it, right now it's off normal, a contact is closed in the dial. As I rotate before I release, it's still in the off normal state. When I release it, it stops playing that connect tone and plays two other tones in an alternating sequence at 10 pulses per second. Uh, one tone for uh, the make when the tone is sent and the other for the break, a second tone for that. So three tones involved in dial pulse. Off normal, sending the connect tone, releasing, alternating to uh, two additional tones that would um, actually send the dial pulses. So it does sound quite a bit different from the uh, IMTS dial pulses. So how does that actually sound? Well, like this. So you hear that connect tone send a half second of it, um, simulating the off normal position of the dial. And then the 
dial pulses as the dial would be released. So a full sequence of this, let's record it, we'll press and hold and go into the record mode. Sunday connect. There's a three second delay that's built into the playback function, waiting for the dial tone, then just dial the number. That's it, that would connect the call. So we'll save that to memory one. Go into playback mode. So you'd key up your transmitter and then play the, um, the cease tone, three second delay, followed by the dial pulses. Then the call would go through. The reason for that extra tone, that extra connect tone at the beginning of each one of the sequences was because the transmitter would actually unkey and stop transmitting radio frequency signals between each digit. So that connect signal uh, was an indicator to the uh, base station that the transmitter was uh, keyed up and back online again. So uh, it was a little different from IMTS that stayed keyed continuously once the call was initiated. So it was done, I don't know, I guess to conserve power or wear and tear on the transmitter. We'll do that one more time. Connect. Now we have a dial tone, hopefully. Then at the very end of the call, the operator, uh, the operator of the box here, if you were spoofing the system, would just press the disconnect key to, um, to hang up on the call and that would disconnect it. So again, very simple, no authentication, predated IMTS and of course cellular uh, initiated probably, this was probably in the 40s when the dial pulse extension was added to the manual telephone service.